so as this section is about how to evaluate stocks so I'm going to explain in this tutorial that how do stock prices change I mean what is the reason behind that because it's first important to know that what is the exact reason behind changing stock prices and then only I'll be able to explain or better explain how to evaluate stocks so just like I told you in one of my previous tutorials that for any good service or commodity the increase in demand leads to increase in price of that product and increase in supply will lead to decrease in price well the reason behind this is the reason why price rises is because the available quantities of goods remains the same that there is only limited quantity of available goods but simultaneously lots of people are asking for it so the seller sees this opportunity and increases the price because he can't fulfill all the needs all the people's needs so he fulfills only those people's needs who are willing to pay a high price and that's why he increases the price to the point where less people are now able to afford it and would be willing to buy it and he can fulfill those needs and also he wants to profit from high price as this opportunity doesn't come like every day so as people are ready to pay a high price he takes advantage of the opportunity and profits from it and similarly when supply rises or there are more quantities of goods and services then people are willing to buy it then in order to ensure that the seller sells the goods that he has right now because he doesn't want his goods to be worthless and as he has lots of goods right now and demand is not that high or people are not willing to buy the goods at the current prices so he lowers the price in order to sell the goods and increase the demand so he lowers the price to the extent until the seller's price is equal to the price that the buyers are willing to buy at so this is how demand and supply works in usual products like potato chips chocolates vegetables and typically all the products and similarly with stocks commodities options futures or for that matter any other financial instrument the demand and supply principles used in purchasing and selling of above mentioned goods apply in these instruments also so now let me explain this with the help of an example so for example a uh, news came out in the public that this new company called mizos pharma has launched a new medicine that could cure aids now this is a really breaking news as no one has made any medicine that could cure aids and that's a revolutionary product so company is going to make tons of profits and when people trading in the stock market heard about this news then demand for that stock increased tremendously so people are now buying stocks of that company from every part of the country so hedge funds wealthy investors and basically all the big guys are really interested in the stock so there's a massive buying of that stock and if there are huge buyers of that stock then the persons who were previously selling the stock for low prices all the people who were selling their stocks for low prices increases their price because why should they sell the stock for low if everyone wants the stock if everyone wants to buy a piece of that company then why would they sell the stock for low price because they can sell to a lot of people now at a high price because people are willing to pay for it and the sellers will keep on increasing the price till the demand slows down and less people are willing to buy it hence fulfilling the demand and making a huge profit from the opportunity whereas if the same news takes a u turn and media says that the company's medicine contains some sort of contaminated chemicals and is rejected by the food and drug administration department which could result in millions of dollars of losses 
because company invested a lot of money making this medicine so then this news would lead to the stock price crashing because now there's no demand no one wants to buy the stock of the company as the news due to which the stock price was rising is no more true and also the company is expected to be a millions of dollars of losses so now everyone who was trying to make a quick buck from the stock is trying to sell the stock for whatever the price is the news is so bad that the people are selling the stock for even a slight loss because they just want to get out of that stock and secure their money and this leads to more fall in prices as supply of stock has risen substantially and no one wants to buy the stock which is reducing the price every second so finally after a few weeks prices are down 90% from the peak levels due to the tremendous supply and no demand so in a nutshell this is how stock prices change demand and supply principles are always in action when buying or selling these instruments now this was an easy example as to know the demand and supply but it's not that simple because the thing is the news was easy to interpret as launching of a new revolutionary product would obviously increase the demand while on the other side nobody will buy the company's stock because the news turned out to be worthless in the end but in real life scenario people don't deal with this kind of news every day they usually deal with a lot of information so it becomes hard to interpret information of the company as to whether to take the news positively or negatively also it's not easy to profit from the opportunity of breaking news as the stock prices change every second and there are millions of people watching the same news not to forget the people taking advantage of insider information so till the news is out in the public within seconds the share price moves up or down depending upon the news and lastly the most difficult part is determining the extent of demand or supply after a breakout of a particular news so in the previous example of new product news it is really hard to interpret the extent where the demand will stop or prices will stop rising similarly it is hard to know when the supply will be stable and prices will stop falling because people don't invest in the market rationally there are so much emotions involved while buying and selling that people are not able to think intelligently and this is why sometimes companies in the market are considered to be undervalued and overvalued and let me explain that so every company has a certain value just like apples and oranges have value similarly company have a certain value so there are times when the company's stock price goes to extremely high levels that the company becomes overvalued and looks expensive and similarly sometimes due to a very bad news companies become undervalued and at this price it becomes attractive but the difficult thing is to define a value because it's difficult to determine a certain or specific value for the company so for example a company sarito have a share price of 200 dollars while the stock investor thinks that the market value of the company is a bit stretched out at this price but on the other side Warren Buffett thinks that he is getting a bargain and calculates the true value of the company to be $300 now both the people have different views and so the value changes and also let me assume that the company value the company has a true value of $500 per share then any price going way higher than $500 would be considered to be overvalued while on the other side any price way too low than $500 would be undervalued and finally just like the beauty lies in the eyes of beholder value always lies in the minds of beholder and it's just that some are right in calculating the value and some are wrong 
and that's basically how the stock prices changes.